Hey y'all, welcome to my monthly video about how I spent my budget. I'm going to be telling you how I spent my budget in the month of September. And before we even start, I did film this look. Who even am I? I have on winged eyeliner and glitter. I'm like, uh beauty guru or something. I'm feeling very 80s with this like hair all to the side and it's crimpy because it was just up in a bun. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you clicked on this video. My name is Hannah and I love beautiful things, but I'm not about that overspending life. I'm not about that overconsumption. So I'm in a battle with myself to keep a balance and have a healthy relationship with the purchase of beautiful things. And I talk about that a lot on my channel. If that sounds good to you, please go ahead and subscribe. Now, let's get right into the meat of this video. I feel like I'm too low down. I have my um, my work chair right now instead of my filming chair. My filming chair is like littler and it doesn't take up as much space, but it's been really squeaky lately. Joe fixed the squeak and then the squeak came back and I just can't deal anymore with the squeaking while I'm editing. I mean, it's not that it bothers me while I'm editing, it's that it bothers me that it's in the video because you can hear it like creaking and squeaking. So this one's like a little chunkier, less cute, but um, it's not squeaky, but it doesn't go up as high. So I feel like I'm, I'm gonna have to stay back here so I'm not down so low. Why am I telling you guys this? You don't care about my problems. You just wanna know what I bought with my budget in September. The first thing, so I'm gonna tell you about replacements first, which is what I usually do. And that's because that's what I usually do. But also the, <laughs> the first thing is the thing that I'm most excited to tell you about, the replacement. Although this is kind of a weird month because there are some things that I bought that I don't even know if they should count as replacements or not. I think that technically they count as like channel budget stuff or, um, re or replacements, but mostly as like YouTube channel running stuff. But I kind of feel like the way that I bought them makes it feel like it's part of my budget. It's a We're a little bit dealing with a vague situation this month across the board. And the thing that I really like about that, and I'll recap this again at the end of the video, but the thing that I really like is that I don't care. <laughs> I'm not worried about myself because I'm not overspending. I didn't really buy anything like super. There is one thing that I bought this month that I'm a little bit not sure about, but all things considered relative to my overall yearly budget and especially relative to how I used to spend and how I used to consume stuff, it all just feels so reasonable and it feels so reasonable and so moderate that I, I just care way less about keeping myself under a tight control, under a tight lid of control on a tight rein. This is gonna be one of those days when the metaphors are like bouncing off the walls, so I'm sorry in advance. Basically, the journey is that three years ago, I was completely out of control. I was buying way too much stuff and I was spending way, way too much money. And the way that I was buying the stuff wasn't healthy. I was doing it because the actual buying of the stuff, the shopping for the stuff and the buying of the stuff was satisfying something in me, like a hole in my soul, you know? And now I feel like not only am I not getting too much stuff with my budget and not spending too much money, not spending too much budget, like my budget is actually a budget and I'm sticking to it. Not only is all of that true, which is very practical and very good, but when I buy stuff, it just feels, even if it's not a good decision, like one thing I'll be talking about in this video, even if it's not the best decision, even if I don't love it so much for myself, it just doesn't feel frantic and desperate and it doesn't feel related to a hole in my soul. It doesn't feel related to like spiritual seeking or an emptiness. The things that I'm acquiring are commensurate with the necessity or the desire, which is all relatively shallow because it's all just stuff. It's all just beautiful things. And so I'm able to back off of the initial really strict measures. The first one was a no by year. The next one was a strict monthly budget. And I did have a strict budget this year and I did struggle with it at the beginning of the year. But I feel like I've moved into a phase where I just am so far out of danger that I don't feel like I need to be so compulsive and controlling about my behavior. And that is ultimately the life that I want for myself. I want to be someone who moderates naturally rather than someone who has to penny pinch and and keep every single thing spreadsheeted and and recorded and all of that stuff so overall i feel like it's a month of success i don't know why i'm giving you like the recap at the beginning 
well, let's go ahead and get into the actual stuff. I really want to tell you about the first thing, but maybe it will help you to have like heard that at the beginning so you can kind of see what I'm talking about as we go through. Anyway, the first thing is very obviously and clearly a replacement, but it's also one of my favorite things that I've like ever bought in my life. And it's partly because it's so special, but it's also because it's so perfect. It's like the perfect solution to, is it too dramatic to say a problem I've been trying to solve for years? I feel like it's just the perfect answer to a, a little question I've had, which is, can I get the product that will hold my brows in place in the way that I want, but without having to have like a big ugly bar of soap? That's not, I, that's like not exactly, the question's kind of like, how can I keep my brows from going like this, you know? Um, but I found the answer, which is soap brows. For me, soap brows is really the real deal. So, you know, you just put a little water on a bar of soap, you put your spoolie into it, you make goop, you stick it in your brows, you stick them down to your face, and then they stay in place all day. And I have very wiry, stubborn brows, and I really haven't found a brow gel yet that will actually hold them in place all day for real, like really, truly won't let them fall a little bit like a sad souffle, you know? Like there really isn't a brush through product that will then hold them because they really need like an iron hold. So when I discovered soap brows, I was like, this is it. But at that time I was just using a random bar of soap. It wasn't even clear glycerin soap, which is what you're supposed to use. It was like this clouded sandalwood soap that someone had given me as a gift. It was the only bar soap that I had that seemed like it would remotely work. And it did work. And even though it wasn't clear, it didn't create those like opaque flakes in my brows. So it was perfectly fine. And then after I used that for like ever, and the fact that I had that was what was precluding me from buying like any kinds of other brow hold gels. Cause I was like, well, as long as I have this soap, why am I buying other stuff? But it wasn't ideal and it also wasn't aesthetic. Like it didn't satisfy that part of me that just loves to have the things that I use be beautiful so that I can get this extra joy out of them and have it feel like this very calming moment where I'm surrounded with beautiful things and I'm just like in touch with the aesthetic pleasure and the central pleasure of things when I'm taking care of myself, putting on my makeup, etc. It didn't have that going for it. It was like clunky. It was hard to find a spot for it on my vanity. And as I used it, it became kind of messy. Anyway, I eventually decided to test the Patrick Ta Brow Wax for my channel. So I got one of those compacts and I really liked that because it was a makeup compact. It did fit the aesthetic purposes and it also worked beautifully. It's a very, very well designed, beautiful product. I'll put my video review of that in the description box below. It's very thorough. So that was great. But I used it up in like less than half a year, like I used it up in four or five months, which it wouldn't be too expensive, like price per use wise. I think I could probably make two of it last for a year. Like I would probably only need to buy it twice in a year. And that's still less than $50 for a year of brow hold. So I feel like ultimately the price per use or price per ounce ended up being fine for me on that. But when I ran out, even though that's true in the abstract, when I ran out, I just couldn't bring myself to buy it again. I just, I kind of felt like I had just bought it. It just feels so high end for something that I used up so quickly. I just, I was like, I want to try something else. And if I can't get anything else to work and I really can't find the perfect thing that's not this, I'll buy it again. So I was thinking that the Patrick Ta Brow Wax would be my forever brow product, but I decided to poke around first. And then as I was poking, I remembered this. So this isn't the first time I had thought of it. I actually, I can't even remember how I, how I found this. I think it was maybe when I was reading into the gloss one time, the, it's like a beauty website blog thingy. I was reading it one time ages ago. I can't remember if they featured this soap or if they featured something else from this little independent shop, beauty shop that is called Takamachi Beauty Room? Takamichi. It's Takamichi Beauty Room. I will, of course, link the shop down below and I'll link their Instagram too. So I clicked through the Takamichi Beauty Room. They have, I've never been there in person. I believe that there are brick and mortar stores in New York, but the way that the website is designed and curated, I can only imagine that it is like a creme de la creme shopping experience. I was really, really compelled by this little independent retailer of beauty products. And I saw this on the site at that time. And at that time, I didn't have an opening. I try to do like replacements only. Like I only buy a thing if I need it. 
and that means I have to have run out of all the other stuff. So at that time, I didn't need a brow soap or a brow wax. Oh, the end of the story, by the way, was that the end of one of these mini stories that are all intertwined was that I, when I got the Patrick Shaw brow wax and I started using it, I used up the sandalwood soap as a body soap. So now it's gone. I, I just like jumped to the Patrick Shaw brow wax. That's why I didn't go back to it when I ended up, when I finished up using the one from Patrick Shaw. So I had it filed away in the back of my mind in my little like beauty stuff room that's back here. That ta Takamichi beauty room has this beautiful, carries these beautiful little soaps. And I had been wondering in the back of my mind if this soap would work for soap brows because it is so beautiful, right? The packaging, the little box is just absolutely stunning. And it just is like perfect for something to keep on your vanity and use every day. It's like, it's packaged like a beauty product, right? It's like really, it's the most stunning, it is the most beautiful beauty product that I have. It's supposed to just be like a gift soap, soap, like a guest room soap, but like a fancy soap. But I'm using it as something that sits on my vanity every day and I just, I can't even stand how special it is. I've been using it for several days and so the embossing on the soap itself has been scraped away, but it says Ortigia on it when it's new because that's the brand, Ortigia Sicilia. And they make luxury perfumes and soaps. It's a really fancy brand. To buy a perfume from this brand, you're shelling out like, you know, 75, 100, $150, but just a little soap like this, like a little guest room soap is just $10, which yeah, it's a lot for like, it's a lot for one little bar of soap, but it's not a lot for a huge cake of brow product, which is what this is to me. It smells amazing. It's the orange blossom scent, really beautiful, a little bit sharp and bitter, but overall floral. The base of this has a little little um, cheetah in it, I guess is what it is, a little spotted cat in it. And then as you can see, like the cover has this absolutely stunning spotted cat on it. I didn't know that it was shiny like this. I feel like the picture from the Takamichi Beauty Room website doesn't show it as being so shiny. And maybe they changed the packaging or maybe they just, the photograph isn't quite true to life. But when I got it in the mail and I opened the package, I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and it's so dainty and sweet. I mean, it's just the best. And it works like a charm. Like it just, if anything, it's actually like stickier and and more, more beefy in the brows than the Patrick Ta Brow Wax. I love the smell. That could be a deal breaker for some people. The Patrick Ta product isn't scented. So if you really need something unscented, because you know, it's a scented soap, um, then the Patrick Ta is probably for you. Um, but for me, this as a replacement product is like, it's glorious. It's pure glory because it's doing everything that the Patrick Ta one did, but there's way more of it in here. It costs less than half of the amount of that one. And it's just such an exquisite, experience using it. I'm so, so pleased with this as a replacement. And I will tell you, I, I did get something else in the package when I placed the order from the Takamichi Beauty Room, but it it's a homewares thing. It's like a, a shared expense for Joe and me, so it, it doesn't count as a replacement or, uh, or a beauty budget purchase because it's not really a beauty budget thing. But I do want to tell you about it in case you look at the website because it's also very unusual, interesting, dainty, beautifully designed. It is a little incense. It's little incense matches. So they're called Hebe. It's like Japanese incense matches. It came in a little matchbook like this that slides out. And this is them. So you can see I've used three of them and there are six left. They come in a pack of nine for I think something like 10 or $12. So it is a little bit of a of a fancy thing, like it's a it's a dollar pretty much every time you burn one. But um, I will tell you the reason that it was like a necessities homeware is that we've moved into this new space and Sadie and the cat, the cat, our cat, our cat Sadie and the dog that lives here are still getting used to each other. They're perfectly fine, but we haven't gotten to the point yet where we can put the litter box 
in another part of the house because sometimes we close all the doors and just close Sadie into our quarters. So Sadie's litter box is actually here in this room with me. And sometimes it just gets a little bit sort of stuffy and smelly in here. So I don't imagine myself like chain purchasing something like this, but just for the time being, while we still have a litter box in here, I wanted to have something sort of more potent than a candle, like something that actually kind of like changes the air rather than masking the smell. So that's why I went ahead and decided to try these out. And I'm really glad that I did. They they work really beautifully. I got the ambergris scent and they are just like intoxicating and incense -y and really, really special. What you do is you take one out. They're solid sticks of incense with a match tip and you strike the match on the side of this matchbook and let it start burning the incense and then you blow it out and then once it's lit there's a separate little little matchbook that has inside of it like a steel wool tray you place it on there and then it just burns itself and it takes about 10 minutes and it makes it smell really lovely in here and, and it really helps with the smell issue we were having so these came together also in the box from Takamichi Beauty Room and I, I couldn't be more pleased with these two things. Like they're just so special. I feel like it's one of the most delightful shopping experiences I've had in, in quite a long time. And not super expensive. Like it wasn't a really expensive order. It was like one thing was $10 and the other thing was $12. So even if I had bought the whole thing with my budget, it still would have been really, really reasonable for me. But that was just a $10 replacement for the soap for my brows. I just trimmed my bangs again like two days ago and I totally missed... Do you see that little thing sticking down? I totally missed a bit. So the brow soap was the only replacement and now we're moving in to talk about my actual beauty budget. Just a refresher about where I am in terms of budgeting. So, you know, I, I gave myself a year long budget. I had a general sense of how the budget would break down month by month, but I wasn't tied to only spending the monthly amount every month. I was allowed to borrow back. And in the first couple months of the year, I just spent the first half of the budget. I spent like more than half of my yearly budget in the first couple months of the year. So then I had to really slow down. And so for all of the rest of the months of the year, starting pretty much in March, I have just purchased a thing here and a thing there with my beauty budget. And they've all been definitely under 50 or $40, most of them under 30 or $20. And they've mostly been kind of in the maybe 15 to $25 range. It's just been like a little bit here, a little bit there. And I don't think it's been more than like one or two things every month that I've bought with my beauty budget. So it's not as though the rest of my budget has been totally intact since March because I have been like, eating away at it a tiny bit, but enough of it stayed intact so that at the beginning of September, at the beginning of last month, when I had four months left in the year, I had enough left technically in the budget that I had given myself that I could theoretically have spent about $100 every month, like probably $100 give or take a little bit every month for September, October, November, and December, and I still would have come in under budget as I had desired. But at the beginning of September, so in my other video, my last video about how I spent my budget, I said that I, even though that's true, I didn't, I didn't want to just run out and like actively spend that hundred or hundred plus dollars every single month and, you know, see out the year just like spending myself up to the hilt of my budget, spending my budget up to the hilt, that I want, what I wanted to do and what I have continued to want to do is just to tootle along doing what I have been doing since March, which is telling myself that big ticket items like things that cost in sort of like the $80, $100 range are off limits for me and not shopping for that kind of thing. And just allowing myself to maybe pick up things that cost much, much less than that here and there if I want them and just having that be my lifestyle right now. And if that means that I only spend 30, 40, maybe close to $50 for every month for the last four months of the year, then great, I'll have come in well under budget. And if that means that I end up with, you know, two or $300 that I could still technically spend at the very end of the year, and then I spend it all at once, that would also be perfectly fine too. It would help me with the fewer nicer things policy. So that's what the outline was for September. 
And what happened was that I just didn't buy anything. Like I bought this, this replacement soap and then time just kept passing and passing. And I just, I didn't think about things that I wanted. I didn't really want to spend my budget. And I had in the back of my mind that if I successfully got through the month without spending my budget at all, then maybe I would be able to, yeah, buy something more expensive later on in the year. So I just kind of like didn't, I just didn't. And this is what I'm, this is what I'm talking about when I say that I feel like moderation has become just a, a bit more natural to me. It's become more my natural state. It's hard to tell because just everything's crazy this year. Like my circumstances are crazy. It's kind of like I, I've been using the analogy a little bit of talking about like losing one's appetite. It's like everything is wonky. And so you can't really tell what kind of changes are permanent, what changes have come from what you've done before or what is just a reaction to these unusual circumstances. So I'm leaving space for that. It could be that I just am so consumed with other stuff that I haven't really had the time or the impetus to go and desire things. But I also know that other times in my life when I've been a rampant overspender, it has been because of like a reaction to stress, reaction to things going on in the world. So I'm glad that this stressful time, this strange time isn't causing me to do that. If my loss of appetite or the increased ease of moderation is coming from stress, then I'm glad that I'm reacting that way instead of reacting in the old way, which was to just be like, all bets are off. I'm so stressed. I'm going to spend hundreds of dollars at Sephora. So that's just to say that I got most of the way through the month, hadn't spent any of my budget. And then I had that thing happen with the nail video. I did this video overhead video where I was trying on some press on nails and the nails that I put on had this beautiful smoke show design with like a clear and black mixed, but they were too long and I had to trim them down. And when I trimmed them down, the design got shortened. And when the design got shortened, it was much harder to tell that it was supposed to be a smoke effect nail. And as shorter nails, they weren't super short. They were just not, you know, long claws as shorter nails that design made it just look like I had nails that were chipping, like black nail polish that had chipped off horribly. And if you looked close, they looked really beautiful. They were really pretty nails, but at a glance, and especially from the, this distance on YouTube, it actually kind of looked horrendous. So I had to paint them. I had to paint my nails. So I did something that I haven't done in years. I mean, years. I bought nail polish. I think it maybe has been at least five years. The last nail polish that I bought, you know, five plus years ago, whenever it was, I think it was just Essie ballet slippers or something. It was like a sheer ballet pink and I used it for a while and then I just never really painted my nails and so I ended up giving it away. So it's been a really long time since I like got in this game with buying nail polish or acquiring nail polish or like deciding to paint my nails colors. Can you even? Look at this little precious bug. Look at this bug. Did you know that Sadie was even a bug? She just wants to be together. So when I realized I was going to need to paint my nails, to paint the false nails, to kind of like make fix them and make them more uniform in color and make them nails that I could wear while I filmed other videos, when I realized I was gonna need to do that, the first thing I did was that I went online and I started like shopping online for nail polish. I started looking around for nail polish, hoping that it could be shipped to me very quickly because I wanted to immediately film that other video that I filmed when I had those nails on, which is the one close up macro footage video of me playing with my makeup, the like no talking, soothing video that went up recently. I wanted to film that, but I wanted to paint my nails before I did it. Sadie was like all settled in, ready to just snuggle with me for the whole rest of the video. And then the camera turned off and I had to go turn it back on and now she's mad and she doesn't want to stay. Um, so I, I wanted to film it like the next day. And so I was like, I need this nail polish quickly. I was like, I needed to cut to arrive as soon as possible. So I was shopping around online. I was looking to see if there's any nail polish that would like immediately ship and that I could get in like a day. And there wasn't, it was, I think it might've been the weekend. And so I, I couldn't like get a next day delivery nail polish. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to have to wait. And then Julia and I were running an errand in the car and we got the brilliant idea of doing like curbside pickup for nail polish. So I called into a beauty store that was near to where we were driving. And I was like, do you have 
a glitter nail polish and a black nail polish because I thought I was going to want to use one of those too. And they were like, yeah. So I bought them over the phone and then we like did curbside pickup of them. And those are the ones that I ended up featuring in that video. One is just this sheer, uh, it's like a clear polish with really big chunks of silver glitter. It's from Essie. And the other one is this just plain shiny black polish from the brand Coat. So those to me are that's obviously like a channel expense. Like it was just, it's just part of what I had to do to like get it so that I could continue that video, continue testing the nails, film the next video. Those aren't colors that I would have purchased if I was like picking my own nail polish. And you know, I, I didn't, I didn't buy them like covetously and desperately. And I, it's almost like I didn't really buy them for myself. Like I bought them for the YouTube channel. So that's an easy decision for me. In a way it was like a replacement thing, a channel budget thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, it doesn't feel like a fraught, troubled purchase to me. So I'm really not worried about like where that money is going to come from. And we used the channel budget and like the, the YouTube channel basically paid for it. So I'm just mentioning that because I talked about that in the video and um, and it's part of kind of like how the month went down in terms of me acquiring stuff with my money. But I'm also mentioning it because I bought more nail polish after that because when I was poking around online, I got very seduced by this nail polish brand Cirque. Have you guys heard of them? Cirque Colors? Because they have this nail polish that it's like something in my dreams. Like I had dreamed of a nail polish like this. I feel like when I had my nails done for my birthday last year, this was what I wanted and, and they didn't have anything quite like this in the salon. So I ended up with something kind of like this. But then when I saw this online, I was like, oh, that's what I've always dreamed of. It's huge, chunky, multicolored glitter in like really bright different colors and shapes. So there's like squares and hexagons and diamonds. It just looks very like Harlequin, very festival, very birthday sprinkles. It's just something that it was like my heart has been searching for it. And when this nail polish and my heart saw each other, like fireworks went off. So I had wanted to get it, but I was like, no, I can't get that to repair my nails because it's not going to arrive in time. So I was like, I'm not going to buy it. Then a couple days later, I was like, you know, I actually really want that nail polish. I want to paint my nails with that. I want to own it. And I love the little bottle and I love the brand. Like it's a cool brand. And I think that they, um, they sent it to me. I, I bought it from Amazon because that was where I was looking for the next day thing. So I didn't realize that Cirque had like their whole own website. And it's like this whole independent little nail polish brand. But I, I purchased it through Amazon and then the package shipped from Cirque Colors and it was a really eco-friendly pouch and the shipping was really fast. And so if I ever buy from them again, I, I won't go through Amazon. I'll definitely buy the, buy the nail polish straight from the Cirque website. Um, and I think, yeah, it's like non-toxic, 10 free, vegan and cruelty free, designed and handmade in Brooklyn, New York. So it's like a cool company. I'm glad that I know about them and I'm shocked at myself for having lusted after nail polish and actually purchased it. Here's the thing though, I didn't just get one. I did that thing where it's like, you can't bring yourself to just buy one. It's something that I've cautioned against before. Uh, and this time I just didn't take my own advice. I've, I fell victim to a thing that I'm aware of and that I've talked about and that I've tried not to do, where it's like, as long as you're buying one, it just feels more satisfying to like get a pair. And there's something about like the curation of the cart, like these two together made me happy. I like how they talk to each other. I felt like I had this little editorial moment in my cart because they like are something to each other together, which for nail polish may, might be kind of like more legit than with other things because I can layer them on top of each other. So this one, um, the, the other one is called Kaleidoscope, the one I was just talking about. This one is called Beatnik and it's like a a yellowy avocado green, like a matcha green. I really love this color for nails and I do feel like I will use them both a lot, especially with the other press on nails that I have. Um, so I don't regret getting the other one as well. I just wanted to articulate that um, I became aware after the fact that I had, I had done that thing where like there was really just the one that I wanted.
I fell for this one. I wouldn't have purchased this one by itself. I purchased it as an add-on, but it doubled the amount of stuff that I was bringing into my home and it also doubled the cost of the order. So it's always good to be able to like point these things out when they happen so that you can just catch yourself in the act as many times as possible. I think I might also have been feeling like I didn't have, I was like, I didn't have any nail polish. I, I had recognized in myself for the first time in years a desire to own nail polish and to paint my nails and to be excited about that. And I didn't have any. So I was like, I can get two. <laughs> That's kind of like how I felt about it. But you know, what that means is that my nail polish collection has gone from zero to four bottles of nail polish just in one month. So I think we can stop now and see how much we actually use this nail polish, Hannah, over the next couple of months. And if I ended up using it a lot and enjoying it a lot, then you know, maybe I'll look into reviewing more nail polishes. I gotta say, I think this was the thing that I was sort of like, is this for me or is it for my channel? Simply because I know that if I wasn't on YouTube, I would not be doing my nails. I, I am interested in it and I do enjoy testing these pop-on nails. I do enjoy the feel and the look of them. And I, I liked having them on, but I know that the excuse for me, like the reason that it seems to make some kind of sense is that my nails are on show, they're on Instagram, they're on YouTube, they're in those close up videos. And so when I bought these, I was thinking, oh, like I'm gonna paint my nails with this one and do like an overhead swatch video. I'm gonna paint my nails with this one and I'm gonna like, you know, do an Instagram picture. Like I'm really, really, they, they to me contribute to my social media project. So I've had this question for most of the month in the back of my mind, like, does that count as my budget or is it sort of like a channel budget thing or like a write-off, like a budget write-off? But the way that I've been talking to you about the experience of buying them, I think it makes it pretty clear that it was a beauty budget thing. I need to consider myself as having spent $30 because that's how much it ended up costing. I think each one was $12.50 and so it ended up being about a $30. Why, am I, why do I think that? I guess it was more like $26 or $26. Yeah, the, I, I'm not rounding up too dramatically. I tend to kind of round up. I tend to round up and down pretty dramatically. <laughs> like I tend to be like, it was $25 when it was like $28. But in this case, I was rounding up dramatically. It was something like $26 or $27. I'm calling that $30 for myself. Broad strokes, everyone, broad strokes. So yeah, I do need to consider myself as having spent $30 of my budget on nail polish unprecedentedly um, because the way it was, a, it was covetous. There was like this fantasy about it. That whole, all of that stuff, that's like the beauty budget process. That's me. That's, that's me going through the process of buying beautiful things to make myself happy, to make me feel good. And that's the thing that I need to make sure that I keep in check and that I pay attention to. So yeah, I spent $30 of my budget about on two nail polishes. And I thought that that was going to be it. And then one last little thing squeaked in under the wire and I'll tell you what it is. And this is the one about which I actually have the most mixed feelings for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, it was another thing where I was like buying something else and doing something else. I didn't set out to like get something or look for something or buy myself something or fill a hole in my wardrobe. I didn't set out to do that. I was doing something entirely else. And then I just fell for the temptation to just like stick in a thing for myself. So here's what happened. Joe's birthday is coming up in October. And every time I've asked him what he wants for his birthday, he said high-waisted pants. <laughs> he like hungers for high-waisted pants. I think it's because at some point, like several months into quarantine, for some reason, Joe ended up trying on all my pants. Like we just had this evening where we like tried on all of each other's pants. And he was so delighted by how waist, how high waisted some of my pants and jeans are. He was putting them on and he was like, ah, oh. and he does have a very long torso. So I actually do think probably he should have been wearing high waisted pants this whole time. Ugh, you guys, my camera just, oh, I think it overheated. It's really almost never happens, but I think that that's what's going on when it kind of turns off. It's been doing it a lot lately. And I think it's just, it's really hot in California right now. It's like we're, we're heading into winter <laughs> or like moving into the fall and it's like super hot here. Um, but I just lost a clip. It's so annoying. I, I When that happens, it like erases the clip that it had just been recording. So I think that we have to go back to, I was just talking, the last thing it recorded was me talking about how we, <laughs> Joe and I tried on each other's pants and he realized that he really wanted high-waisted pants. So I went looking for high-waisted pants 
And um, it's a thing, high-waisted pants for men, something that I found um, is really difficult to track down if you're not buying like runway pieces like designer. There were, there were a number of them that were, you know, in the $1,500 range, like really expensive pants from high-end designers. I think that if you're looking for something, I guess it's a bit editorial, right? It's a bit out there to look for high-waisted pants for men right now. Um, if you're looking for that kind of thing, it tends to be easier to find from those designers. But, um, you know, places where I could afford them, I was just not having very much luck. And the only place where I found like a selection where I was like, oh, it looks like we might be able to find, like look at different styles of high-waisted pants for men and find one that fits well and they were really, truly high-waisted, was at ASOS. And ASOS is a brand that I myself have never shopped at and that I have no interest in for myself. It's not even a, just a brand. It's like a, it's a website that sells a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but, you know, the brand, they sell, they have their own brand and then they carry other stuff as well. The entire store, everything they make and everything they sell, I'm just not really interested in shopping at ASOS for myself because I consider it fast fashion. And... During my no by year, I, I kind of lost my taste for fast fashion. I think that because I was changing my voracious nature with shopping, like that desperation, that feeling like you can't be stopped, that feeling like nothing matters more than it, because that was changing and I was starting to really turn the dial down on like the, the just the, the craziness of my shopping behavior, that allowed this other part of me that knows that fast fashion, consuming fast fashion is like not really something that I want to do all that much in my life if it can be helped. Um, that voice got louder because the voice of like, I need to buy the thing, I need to fill the hole in my soul, that started getting quieter. And then this other voice got louder. And I've never come on here and been like, I'm never going to shop at Zara again. Or like, i I vow to never buy fast fashion again. I've never said that to myself, um, but I also have never bought anything fast fashion since before my no buy year. And I have gone into Zara a couple of times because I used to love it so much. I used to love Zara. And I've gone in physically, like before the pandemic, just to see if I could get myself to feel those old feelings, like just to see if, if the, I was curious, I was like, is there going to be anything that's so special that the excitement about how special it is and the excitement about how low the price is uh, relative to the specialness will, will overwhelm that other voice that's like not, not that impressed by the Hannah that buys fast fashion. And it just didn't like the other voice was just louder. I just couldn't, I couldn't really get it up to buy anything there. Um, which is, I, I, I think that that's good. Like I, I'm glad that I'm proceeding that way. And I'm glad that the vast majority of my purchases of clothing over the past three years have been secondhand. Um, and then once or twice I've purchased something from a company that I know has more sustainable practices or at least is making an effort and that I don't really consider to be squarely in the definition of fast fashion. But ASOS, I know they are making some sustainability efforts. Like when I was surfing their site, there were all of these pieces that were like, this is part of our sustainable collection or this is part of our, you know, good uh, fair trade, sustainable organic cotton collection or something. So it's obvious that they're not just like, 100% taking the money and run. They're doing something. But I didn't look into it to... I, and I mean, I did look in a little bit. I like looked them up a little bit and I didn't see anything that made me think that they're not fast fashion. <laughs> like I think that that is what they are. So I have never been like, I'm going to buy from ASOS. I've never been interested in it for that reason. But because I was really, really on a mission to like get a couple pairs of high-waisted pants for Joe to try... Uh, and because it was the only place that I could find like a selection where my plan is to like order a selection in the mail and have him try them on and then decide if I want to like actually buy them for him. And this is another thing that I actually don't do for myself anymore ever. The like mail order dressing room thing where you like buy a whole bunch of stuff just to try it on and then send it all back. I never do that anymore with makeup, with clothes, with anything, because that's another behavior that before my no buy year would really trick me into spending a lot of money and acquiring a lot of things that ultimately weren't good choices for me. And it's also, you know, not a, not a very sustainable choice to do that a lot. But 
you know, we don't do that a lot. And Joe never buys himself anything. It's just like the one time a year on his birthday. If it weren't for the pandemic, we'd go out physically to the shops and try stuff on. But I'm trying to like recreate that for him a little bit at home because it's what he really wants for his birthday. So I was like, okay, this one time I'll place this order from ASOS and get you know, three pairs of high-waisted jeans for Joe to try and hopefully one of them will work out or at the very least we'll find out which style of theirs works for him and then I can just buy it and then we'll be done with it. And as I was going around the website, I found something that I wanted to put in the cart for myself and it's this t-shirt that I'm wearing. It's like a huge oversized, really huge. I can show you the whole thing. I'm wearing it tucked into my pants like this so that it doesn't just look like a smock because it really does. It, I mean, otherwise it just looks like you're wearing your pajamas, like a sleeping, it's like a sleep shirt. I do like how it looks for a day when it's tucked in in the front, a little French tuck. It was something like $28. It was like getting close to the $30 mark. Not cheap, I feel, for a thing like this, um, but not like $60, you know what I mean? And that is around the price point that I feel comfortable with for spending on things for, with my beauty budget these days. And I just am acutely aware that I have such a small hot weather wardrobe, <laughs> like really hot weather where you just want to wear like t-shirts and loose stuff and cotton stuff. I just, I have this like tiny drawer of just like three or four t-shirts and then you know pants it's easier I have like pants can be like more hot weather or cold weather but in terms of like tops like this like loose fitting things to wear when you're really really hot that part of my wardrobe it just never seems to be robust and I I was placing the order from ASOS at a time when I was feeling very frustrated that I felt like my t-shirts were always dirty. I felt like it was the only thing that I ever had to wear that was not uncomfortably hot because again, it's been really hot here. And I was just like, this is an easy way to just add something into a cart I was already checking out with and like plug that hole or like put a little bit of, of a plug into that hole, clear hole in my wardrobe that is currently exasperating me. So I did it. Um, and I just don't feel that great about it. Like, I, I do like it. I'm not totally obsessed with it. One thing I will say for it, it 100% plugs that hole in my wardrobe. And ever since this arrived, which wasn't even that long ago, it was like a week ago, I've worn it first thing every time it's been clean. I've washed it, I think, two times. So I wore it, washed it, wore it again immediately and washed it and immediately wore it after I washed it again. So that tells me something. Like, it, it's working out. I've worn it with three different pairs of pants and it looks good with all of them. It is very me. It's just, it's working for me, right? So I, I can't complain. But it's not the impeccable shopping decision and like the shopping choice that I want for myself that I wish I could have made. It was just like a kind of an opportunistic moment. If I had not been placing the order from ASOS to get Joe's pants, I would never in a million years have gone on there and bought this for myself. Um, and I know that that's true. And so the fact that I know that that's true does make it feel a little bit less bad. Like it would have been horrible if I had just suddenly gotten super hungry for like a bunch of fast fashion t-shirts and I had like gone on ASOS and bought five of them. And then when they arrived, like picked three and sent two back. Like if I had done something like that, that's like pre no buy year behavior and that would have felt bad. Um, so it doesn't feel as bad as something like that would have felt. But I also just don't, I'm, I'm not over here. I don't feel about it the way that I, <laughs> the way that I feel about this, right? Or the way that I felt about my Ula Johnson blouse that I bought secondhand from an eBay seller, or even the way that I feel about supporting this small nail polish brand. Um, it's just, it's, I think that the, the takeaway, the thing that I'm glad about is that now I know that doing this, even though all signs pointed to yes, right? It's like, I was already placing the order. It wasn't expensive. It was definitely something that I needed. And it's ended up being something that, it, that I enjoy having. All, all signs pointed to yes. But the fact that I have kind of been moving away, not even kind of, the fact that I have been very much moving away from um, buying from shops like that, um, and that I haven't done it in three years, even though I haven't made a strict policy, the fact that that's true meant that 
going ahead and getting it, it poisoned the experience a little bit. Uh, and so now I know that and it makes me much, much less likely to do it again in the future. So this is about $30. I'm counting the nail polish and that was about 25, 30. I think this was like 25 to 30, 25 to 30. So it's probably going to add up to roughly 55, maybe even getting close to $60 that I spent of my budget, which is more than I have been usually, which is so funny because this was a month where I didn't feel like I... I didn't feel like I had like shopping problems this month. I didn't feel like I was like, you know, about stuff. Um, it was kind of a casual decision to get these and a joyful one. Um, and then same with this. I it was like a practical decision moment where I was like, oh, I really, this is a perfect opportunity to like, you know, fit this little thing in when it will be great because I really need a thing like this. And then I was like, you know, so I guess I, I guess that is kind of like shopping problems, but you know, I didn't have, I wasn't like on my shopping itchiness this month. So it's interesting to know that um, even though that's the case, I did end up spending technically close to $60. Um, but still, that's well under the amount that I have left in my budget in the year. I could have spent 100 or even like $150 in September and I still would have been fine. Um, so it's still fine. It's still moderation for me. Um, and especially the fact that it was just like, one little nail polish purchase and then the one shirt that also feels like the kind of moderation that I'm after just considering like everything that's going on in my life what my budget looks like and what my stuff looks like and how I want to live that is it I hope that this was enjoyable to watch it felt a little bit frenetic um, but it's over now um, and yeah thanks for being here of course and don't forget to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. <laughs>